Uh, our speaker tonight is Stanley R. Howe, the native of Bethel, his family's lived for generations. He was educated in the Bethel Public Schools and graduated from Gould Academy in 1962. He later graduated from Golden State College, now a part of, of USM, in 1966 with a major in history. He subsequently received an MA in history from the University of Connecticut in 1967 and a PhD also in history from the University of Maine several years later. He was admitted to the Historical Honor Society Phi Alpha Theta Phi Gamma chapter in, 19, in 1974. He's taught history in a number of colleges and universities and directed graduate students in such institutions as Wesleyan University and the University of West Virginia. He has also lectured and written on many topics relating to New England and Canadian history. He served as executive director of the Bethel, Bethel Historical Society for over 30 years. He has been very active in the community. His publications include a wide variety of articles, books, reviews, plus several monographies. For his long service in the field of history, he has received a number of awards, including in 2013 the Maine Historical Society's Neil W. Allen Jr. History Award in recognition of outstanding contributions in the field of Maine history and genealogy. Currently the historian of the Maine State Grange, he is also the author of A Fair Field and No Favor, a concise history of the Maine State Grange published in 1994 by the Maine State Grange. House presentation on the history of Franklin Grange and Bryant Pond will cover some of the highlights of this Grange's record from the 1870s to its recent closing earlier this year. Family? Okay, uh, I'd like to thank uh, some people who helped me do this, uh, uh, including the Bonnies. Uh, but uh, we were lucky to have some accounts uh, from Edith Abbott, Ellis Davis, Ruby Emery, Wilma Day, and Laura Hutchins. And so those people, I think, should give some, get some recognition. Some of them aren't with us today, but uh, aren't with us at all, so they're gone, long gone. But anyway, they left behind some wonderful things that will be of interest to a lot of people uh, down the road, I'm sure. Uh, it's important to remember organizations for farmers in Maine have not been numerous. Agricultural societies first appeared in the 1790s and proliferated in the 19th century. In the 1850s, Dr. Nathaniel Tuckerman True of Bethel, I have to throw him in every time because he's such an important figure, organized what is believed to be the first farmers club in Maine, <clears throat> which flourished for several years. It included farmers and their wives, though they usually met separately. As was the case with several agricultural societies, the emphasis was educational first and then social. <clears throat> Agriculture in Maine has always been a struggle, even in the best of times. From the earliest years in the 17th century, tillers of the soil had to uh, contend with a difficult climate, including the year 1816, we all know that, what happened there, when there was a killing frost from each month uh, of that year. They also faced rocky soils, except from near the river valleys, and, certain, and uncertain prospects due to transportation, markets, and of course the all favorite pests. Uh, there's lots of agricultural pests. We all know what they were, what they were like. During the 1830s and 40s, uh, the West opened up and became a competitor of Maine farms, which made it necessary to, for diversification, reform, and greater emphasis on scientific principles. Increasingly, farming in Maine in the 19th century changed from uh, subsistence to commercial agriculture. It was into this world that the Grange emerged in 1867 after the Civil War, which had left the Confederate South with much devastation and destruction. The Federal uh, Commissioner of Agriculture in recruited Oliver Hudson Kelly to uh, assess the conditions and provide recommendations to strengthen American agriculture. One of his solutions was a secret society of farmers, which would assist in binding up the nation's wounds by emphasizing fraternal and brotherly love. While he was organizing, his niece, Caroline Hall, suggested 
that this new order grant women equal rights. And this is one of the things that's most important about the Grange. I think it was the first 19th century organization that gave, we gave women equal rights. And it was really progressive here. And it's amazing that it happened, but it did. So anyway, um, this, this uh, was accepted. The first Grange in Maine was number one, Eastern Star in Hampton in, uh, on, on 24 October 1873. It was soon followed on January 25th, 1874, with Lewiston number two. The main state grange was organized in Lewiston at the GAR Hall on April 1st, 1874. The following year, a group of Woodstock uh, citizens gathered at the town hall in Bryant Pond to found a subordinate grange, which became, uh, which became uh, a reality on 11 March 1876, Franklin Grange number 124. And I wonder if, uh, if Franklin, we always wondered how, how they got the name Franklin. I'm going to say probably Benjamin Franklin, but I could be wrong. Does anybody have any ideas about that? Uh, it looks like Franklin was a very popular figure and it seemed like a, the right type of name to, to give to a Granger, but I, I don't know, but that's some of the things I'm, I'm posturing, so hopefully if anybody has any other ideas, let me know. Franklin down in Green. What's that? There's another Franklin Grange in Green. Yeah, yeah, that was a popular name, but uh, they had a different number though, so. I don't know the number. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, the following year, a group of Woodstock citizens gathered at the town hall in Bryant Pond to found a subordinate grange, which became on, uh, one on 11 March 1876. Uh, the officers installed were installed by Chief Deputy George B. Crockett the same evening. Others were allowed to join at the subsequent meetings as, as charter members until the membership numbers totaled 51. So they had quite a few people already at the early days, early stages of the organization. The Grange ma Master selected a committee to designate a name for this new Grange. The name Franklin, presumably after the great American Rev revolutionary hero, uh, suggested and, uh, and adopted by the, was adopted by the Grange members. The early meetings were held on Saturdays in the afternoon. It was later decided to hold the meeting on the first and third sun Saturdays during each month. <clears throat> Among the first pro uh, purchases of the Grange were a Bible and uh, also a set of jewelry uh, for the offices. The offices staffs were acquired in 1876. For Agrelia, the women wore white sashes trimmed with red and the men were wore tan sashes. I don't know what, I've never seen that tan sash, but it's one of those things I'd like to know about. The Grange, early in its uh, existence, became notable for the food that, that its members brought and served at the town hall meeting place. Grange dues were set by the state Grange at $1.20 annually. And I, I want to tell you that when I joined the Grange in 1957, they were still a dollar twenty, isn't that something? <laughs> so, so that number is, is, is etched into people's mind, I guess. So anyway, um, the secretary got special treatment on dues. The hall agent was paid fifty cents a meeting, and the Grange paid the town fifty cents a meeting for use of the town hall. So that's what they did. Some years after the founding of the Grange, it fell on hard times. In 1879, they discussed the question of its survival. Several young people joined in this, at this time, and the Grange began to flourish. In 1890, the Grange began to consider the building of a hall, and a committee was uh, appointed to consider this possibility. The members of this committee included H.H. H. Cushman, Albion Bowker, S.I. Russ, G.W.Q. Parham, and S.C. Davis. In spite of some misgivings, it was decided to go ahead with plans for constructing a hall with a, um, <clears throat> with a fund of less than $500. The committee authorized the laying of a foundation for a hall, 32 feet times 72 feet on, uh, on 24 August 1891. 
Benjamin Davis Jr. was hired as head carpenter and all the male members who were willing to give their time went to work and while the women got dinner for the crew and helped lathe. It was noted that Lena Felt and Myrtle Bacon could drive nails as well as any man. Isn't that something? <laughs> Okay, the new hall was finished and dedicated on 31 August 1892. G.W.Q. Perham uh, was the master and the Grange claimed 133 members. That was pretty good for that time, you see. Uh, to raise money to pay off the debt for the building, the hall, the hall had a, um, building a hall, the Grange Fair was held with articles to sell, including dolls and a fine supply of fruits, vegetables, and fancy work. Over $240, that seems like a lot of money in those days, was raised for this, from this activity. A piazza was added uh, in 1891. And it's one of the few granges that had a piazza that uh, extensive. So I think if you look at granges all over Maine, and I've been, been to many of them, uh, the, the Bryant Pond Grange was, was very unique in that sense. In 1894, the young ladies of the Grange proposed a social hour and a box supper be held in the hall, which resulted in paying off the final debt for the hall. In 1894, the young ladies... Um, um, I'm not, I'm not, during the, these earlier years, the Grange uh, supported cooperative buying and selling of goods. Among the offerings were wool, farm tools, fertilizer, and stock food in, qua in qua quantity. A room was sheathed in the Grange Hall for the store. The first trade agent was A.L. Rowe. Rowe. In 1896, it was voted to buy 50 barrels of flour and other groceries. Imagine 50 barrels of flour all at once, and that's quite a, quite a thing. What's that? Yeah, a lot of flour. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, later, G.I. Cushman served as store manager. The Grange store continued until 1931, so it went out in 31. In 1898, the master, H.H. H. Cushman, made and donated a bookcase to the Grange and appointed a committee to buy books for the Grange library. Stella Bacon was the first librarian. These books were much appreciated by the members. They were, were, however, later donated to the town library once they got the library. So you see they were ahead of people there. Uh, <clears throat> the, on, in June 1909, a stable was built in back of the hall, uh, 50 by 60 feet. H. Alkin Baker, Bacon was the head carpenter. And of course, that's still there today, too. Um, although it's used for different things. In 1925, the year of the 50th anniversary, the entire building outside of the main hall was remodeled. Uh, eight feet of building was added to the back along with a rear entrance. A dining room seating over 100 was also added along with a kitchen and a large stage with dressing rooms. The extension of the piazza was also completed as well. The work was planned, was planned and in charge of Albert H. Russ. The hall was also wired and electric lights installed uh, th that same year. Franklin Grange was always, for the most of its history, a lively grange with lots of music and plenty of robust discussions and activities. It served its community well and was generous financially in supporting the library and other Bryant Pond institutions. I'd like to read off some le legacies that's left. A hall that was the envy of many Granges and other visitors. Uh, and for example, it had a junior uh, Grange room, which was highly unusual. Most Granges don't have that, and that's one of the things that uh, I was noted uh, by when I visited Franklin Grange, which I did many times. The offering of Mark Hee-Haw shows for fundraisers and entertainments, a continuous sale of cookbooks and other unique items, sponsorship of all kinds of benefits, suppers, and other fundraisers. Uh, it also uh, had another Grange merge with it uh, at West Sumner, the Pleasant Pond Grange. It also established, a, installed a lift in 1996, 
and lots of work have completed on the hall in the 1990s. And they honored numerous citizens with community service awards. Um, I, I can't uh, uh, say enough about how important uh, Franklin Grange was to many of us, and uh, I've only covered just a small, small um, bit of its history, but you get some idea of what a remarkable Grange it was. I always uh, love to go there all the years. I've been a Grange member for 60 years, and uh, I always, my favorite was always going to Franklin Grange. And of course, I, you couldn't mention Franklin Grange without mentioning Richard Felt. I mean, the guy was the most incredible person you ever saw. You never knew what he was going to say or do. So he was one of those people you just couldn't uh, help but. And he was so helpful in other Granges. He was very generous with his talents and his organizational things. And he always had a good smile on his life, on his, on his face. And he was just the, the best person you could ever have. Uh, I also uh, learned something from this whole project. I didn't realize uh, that the Grange I belong to, Alder River, uh, once uh, uh, was faced the same opposite thing that uh, when Alder River uh, took over Franklin Grange just this year. But uh, I didn't realize that Alder River was originally organized in Greenwood. Uh, where near the river, um, under the, you know, the Alder River uh, is located. Um, and it was, uh, uh, came about in uh, uh, the 19th century. And uh, people joined this Grange, were largely from East Bethel. Greenwood had a hall, and that's why they went to that uh, hall overlooking Alder River. Um, but uh, it later disbanded, and these members joined Franklin. The second uh, Alder River was organized much later in 1904. So we had the uh, Alder River Grange joining uh, Franklin, and uh, later on, uh, uh, when, once they found their own Grange, it was, but then now Franklin had to join, merge with Alder River. So isn't that something how that happened? How, what an ironic, ironic thing that was. Um, I think we have some uh, visions now of, uh, of uh, that Will is, uh, Will is going to give us some uh, visions here. This, this of course, is the book I did on the uh, on the Grange, and it has some wonderful uh, views of what Granges were like. You see, this romantic feeling about uh, Grange people. You see, so you see all these things about Granges, and and I think the thing that women had equal rights it was is such an incredible uh, milestone that you can see women were very clearly there and in, in the Grange and and uh, were very important, and I think it's, they were ahead of their times in some ways, because we, we know how tough it was to get women's suffrage uh, passed. Okay, and you can see here, this, this is another view of Granges, you see, with all kinds of Grange activities. Uh, these were great things. Uh, this was the, the, when we had the, uh, remember the, uh, the State Grange organized a hay relief for Iowa, and uh, I think it was Iowa, it was one of those. And that was one of the things that they got a citation from the legislature on, you see, so. This is the back cover of your book. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and this is a Grange meeting, and I want to bring your attention to, I put some sashes up here, so uh, I think Grange has had about 12 main, main offices in the Grange, and I have all but one, I think Flora is not there, but all these sashes uh, were very clearly uh, there. You can see them there, and uh, you can take a look at them after, we, after the meeting. And, uh, and I have also uh, a, a, a Alder uh, cloth here, it says P of H, you see that underneath the apron there, so you take a look at that, so that's another thing. But this is a good example. Here's, here are the offices you can see here. Uh, it's probably interesting to see, uh, if those are not Grangers, you see. The master is the president, and you see, him, you see the word M up on the right-hand side here up there, at the top there. And there's, you can down, his chaplain, and then overseer is the vice president of the Grange, you can see that down there. And you see the lady assistant steward and the assistant steward are there. And remember, there's a lot of floor work in the Grange. You have to keep that in mind. And then in the, uh, you can see A is the altar. 
And there's a, a rug that's, they have a, there's a list of the cloth, but that's what they call it, a, 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 it's a rug really. And the L is a lecturer, she has charge of the, of the programs of the Grange. And you can see the chaplain over here on this side. And then you see uh, over there is the treasurer and the secretary on the left there you see. And the top FCP, uh, Flora, Ceres, and Pomona, the, the, the three graces you see. So that's what the Grange floor looks like. And uh, you'll see these sashes. If you were a member of the Office of the Grange, you have these sashes, and these are typical. Of, they're pretty well worn, but they give you an idea what the sashes looked like in the 19th century. Okay, this is the manual of the Grange. Uh, there's there's a, all kinds of, and one of the things that's interesting to, uh, for me is that. Uh, uh, the old timers in the Grange, when I first joined the Grange, you were never to see a blue book on, they were usually blue, on, uh, in, 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 in the open because you were supposed to have everything memorized in that book and you were never to refer to it because, and uh, if you, today we all uh, can't live without the book because we don't remember everything and don't re re memorize everything. But they, they, the old timers never allowed those blue books to be on the floor of the Grange. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Okay, and here's the Junior Grange manual, you see, which is very similar to the, to the adult one, but it's uh, much more simp simplified. But, but they had the same, same things that, as the, as the um, um, regular Grange. Okay, this is the building where the Grange was, was begun in, in G.A.R. Hall in Lewiston, you see. So we owe Lewiston lots of uh, um, homage because they, it was, the Grange really started there in, in, that, in that building. So. Okay, here's a great history of the Grange, uh, done in the 1867, 1967, so yeah, so. Next one. And here's one of the Grange handbooks, programs, and they were always all kinds of programs to help you uh, with your Grange and uh, things to bring into your Grange and, and get activities of all sorts. And this is the songbook of the Grange here, which was a very important, uh, you had, we had these songbooks and every, every Grange had all kinds of songbooks. There's a lot of music in the Grange and a very important part of Grange life was uh, the, this. this uh, we have also the, the song, another, this is an earlier one, this is 1874 you see, but uh, yep. And the register is, uh, lists all the Granges and how, what, who, the, who was a member and how many members they had and who the offices were and all that sort of stuff. Okay. And of course, lot, nothing like a bumper sticker, you see. Okay. This is an early view of the Grange, the Grange at Homer and the Grange at Abroad, you see, the, how important Granges were. And you can see how both one emphasized that sort of thing, how important Grange was. And it was, they were really making a sacrifice and making all kinds of contributions to the society. Okay. And here's an application for membership. And anybody who isn't a Grange member always has a chance to join, so that, there it is. <laughs> and this is the first day of issue. With the, the, uh, they honored the founder of the Grange, Oliver Hudson Kelly, you see there, with that special stamp, you see, so. And here's Oliver Hudson Kelly here, you see, and he's a souvenir of the 50th anniversary of the Grange. And the Grange in uh, New England was considered the Gibraltar of the Grange because it, for some reason the Grange was particularly strong in, in New England than it was anywhere else in the country. But uh, later on the West took over more, but, but for a lot, most of its history the Grange, the biggest, um, most enthusiasm for the Grange has been New England, you say so. And here's a little bumper, a little uh, uh, button for you to see I'm proud to be a Granger, you say so. Okay, and this, uh, this is very interesting. This is uh, uh, all the River Grange, uh, and uh, back in the, it's probably uh, way back in the 19th century, you say, so. And do you have, did you do the backside? Did we, did we do that? Yes, that's the backside. They turned them around, when you had, if you had a member die, you turned them around and you wore that when you were at the Grange meetings. That's why it was, and this emphasizes the, the ties with, with, with Franklin Grange, you say, so. Okay, and here's a dance card. And here's another cattle show, Grange. And here's an achievement award they give to people who do something in the Grange. And 
a, uh, we had when the tw 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 2000, uh, tw another bumper sticker, 2000, year, year 2000 came around, a, a new century and a new Grange, you see. That was one of the marketing things that Grange had. And here's a good view of the uh, Grange assembled in front of the town hall in Bright Pond. And here's some more here. So this is Mona Grange, which is the county level Grange, but not all of them were Franklin members, but they were all over Oxford County probably. So here's another view of them. So and here's that famous one with them sitting on the roof there of the, of the hall once it got built, you see there. So isn't that a great picture? OK. And here we see Richard Felt on the right, isn't he, playing his harmonica? Yep. And, yeah, that's Richard Felt. And this is the Mark Hee you see. Yeah. So, and one of the many things there's, that. There's Carl Brooks. Yeah, Carl Brooks, yeah. Carl yeah. Canwell. Yeah. yeah. And remember, Doc Canwell used to whistle while she played the piano, so that was always a great thing with that. Also, there's Olive Davis over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She looked pretty, pretty rural, doesn't she, with her hat on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And here's Dot Canwell again. Uh, you can see her here. And she was the lady who sat with the piano, and she just whistled away. And great friend of, uh, of Richard Feltz, too. So, yeah, yeah. And this is a, a, one of the lamps in the Franklin Grange Hall. Lights, I should say. And this is one of the, this is the, this is where, what hall is this? Is this the downstairs? Uh, upstairs. Upstairs, upstairs. Okay, okay. Stage, okay, yeah. Okay. Stage. Had, Okay, uh, and this is the hall again, is it? Yeah, yeah so yeah, upstairs. It's hard to remember without, without seeing all the furniture, you see. Yeah, okay, and here's another view of it. That was in the juvenile Yeah, 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 yeah. And this must be upstairs, is it? Yeah, yeah. Secretary yeah. station. Yeah, okay, this is downstairs, the dining room, yeah, yeah. And this is the where they put, put the, all the good stuff away in the in the cupboards. Yep. And that's a juvenile Grange. Juvenile Grange. Yep. 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 This is one of the uh, wall decorations. Yep. Yep. More more decorations you see. This is the dining room again. Yep. Yep. Upstairs. Upstairs. And wall decorations, and that is that it. Yeah. Okay. Well, anybody have any questions or anything that you want to know? Uh, which I see. Anybody have any comments or anything? Yes. Patrons of husbandry. Husbandry means saving and, and conservation and caregiving and all that sort of stuff. It's a, it's a word that has, it's a really wonderful word because you look at husbandry and it had all kinds of 19th century uh, meanings, you say, so. Yeah, oh, yep. One of the things that Brian Pond is very well known for <coughs> is at the conservation school, they ran mm -hmm. a one or two week program for Grange yep. juveniles. Yep, yep. Yeah. And you would, uh, I think probably you and I went, would be there for a week or two when you would learn the Grange history. You would learn from the high priest of the meet up. And I don't know if you remember the high priest. No, it was, it, I didn't, I, it, that was after, you were, was, I've just, I, that, we didn't, I didn't do that, but you, you're, you're, you're just a few years later, you did, you did it. So, yeah, yeah. The high priest of the meet up was the person in the state Grange that did all the rituals. Yeah. And the high priest of the meter also has the annual secret word, you see. So, <laughs> so that's another thing he did. So, other questions? Yes. Um, you said I think when you first opened the program that it was a secret organization. Yeah, it, it supposedly still is a secret organization uh, technically, but uh, I don't think we take it so seriously. In the old days, you had to be very careful, but I don't. It's a lot less secret than it used to be but uh, so you have a secret password and and uh, and you have you that's why you have all these people to watch the guide the doors and all that sort of stuff so you have to have to have the right word to get in you see they're not as strict as they used to be it used to be terribly strict in the old days and uh, 
And uh, you had to rememberize all this stuff, and if you didn't do it, you were in trouble. So, But uh, they were a lot less hard on that issue than they used to be, and have more open meetings now than they used to, too. So. There were seven degrees in the Grange. Yeah, seven degrees, yeah, to go to the national, to the national Grange, yeah. So you go to the local and county, and then uh, um, on to the uh, national, you say, so. Yes? I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't know that. I, does anybody know that? The Cushmans in, of of Bryant Pond, Woodstock. Do they anything related to the one that, that's the Cushman Bakery in Portland? You say so. I don't know. I don't. I don't yeah, know. yeah. I don't think so. But I. I don't know. So. Yeah. Um, the Grange was very generous with the Woodstock Historical Society. There is some of the memorabilia over there that they gave us. Uh, we have numerous secretaries' books. That they shared with us, so we have those in our archives, um, box after box after boxes you, of things. Did you receive so, the master's pictures? We have the master's pictures. Yeah, that that's, that's all of, all of, There's cool. a uh, notebook down there that has copies of those. I scanned those all in, and there are copies of those except, down there in the notebook. Uh, except for uh, uh, Frank and Rain is just one of the few Rain had pictures of them. Yep. All the masters from the word go yep. all the way the front. No, I think Norway brings itself first, or it's no. Yeah. We're very, very proud to have that. We have a small display that will be back up again. Once I put stuff back up again, um, for next spring when we open. So. And if anyone, is, if anyone is interested in the <coughs> backdrops that were on the stage at the Franklin Green, the Waterford Green has the North Water. North Water. Yeah, yeah, me, yeah. Do you have a quilt that's made by the Grange? Yeah, the, the, the um, Grange quilt is also at the Historical Society. Okay, anybody else got any questions? Yes? Do you know what the origin of the word Grange is? Uh, it, it means, uh, um, well, let's see. What, what does it mean? It says has uh, has a word that I I'm not thinking of right now, but uh, it means an organization of some sort, a gathering of some sort. So, what's your word? What's that? What's what Grange meant? What the word Grange meant? Just, just the Grange. It's it's a it, it's usually a it's usually some kind of it's an English uh, countryside. There was a you know gathering of trees and buildings and you know a little bit of everything. You say so. Any other questions or comments? And well, thank you all for being so thank good. You, so, yeah.